these financial service companies, and there are at least 20 to 30 of them by our count, who are doing this high-speed trading. And they've really only been doing it, you know, like five or seven years uh, that they have needed this service and have been building it. And there will be some opportunities ahead. So what exactly are the challenges that you feel you're facing? Uh, and uh, what opportunities come out of solving those challenges? Should we start with Jay this time? Yeah, I think for us, uh, part of it's being the new kid on the block. Um, you know, wireless is new to this application, but it's certainly not new uh, to the world. And uh, <clears throat> beyond that, there's an issue of planning, uh, spectrum management, what have you. But what we have found is that more and more uh, the finance client uh, sees microwave as a necessary part of their business. So what we're trying to do is, as I said, take the wireless out of wireless. Uh, our handoff is a wire. Our networks are strings of Christmas tree lights and they just move bits really, really fast. And it, once we get people convinced that that can work, and they also understand that we're also a partner to the fiber world, uh, the acceptance goes up considerably. Unmolested bits, we'll add. Hey, we don't molest our bits. <laughs> <laughs> and Sheldon, for layer one, talk to us. Yeah, so, well, I guess, you know, one of the things, obviously, is you, you get to a point of diminishing returns, I think, if you got, you know, points and space and and, and if you're, you start with the assumption that they're fixed, you start trying to cut away, you know, a little, an extra millisecond or now get into the microseconds and people talk about nanoseconds, obviously what the challenge is you start to run into physical limitations. You can't beat physics. Uh, so people will sometimes say they went faster than the speed of light only to find out that that's not true. <laughs> so um, so that, that there's really that. And so people st will start getting creative with doing things like they might disable forward error correction or take out regenerative elements where they normally would have put them. And then that starts to put in trade-offs, you know, with respect to the reliability of the message. And so how far are you really willing to take that? And so I think that's, you know, definitely a challenge uh, or, you know, an issue with it. Uh, the other thing is if you just look at the nature of the switching equipment that resides at data centers, um, you know, because it's a packet-based kind of thing, you, you, you inevitably deal with um, uh, uh, uncertainty in the latency and uh, that comes about just from uh, queuing delays and contention for ports and so on. So there's that aspect of it uh, for, for one to deal with. Um, and then I think another thing is just uh, what I would say is, uh, you know, as people start to evolve data centers and so on, there's the whole protocol soup to deal with. There's lots of talk about virtualizing data centers and uh, how one would go about doing that. Um, and uh, there's many competing protocols, some are proprietary, a whole stack of them, if you will, for, for solutions there. So I think that that's definitely a challenge for those who are responsible for the infrastructure. Um, so, you know, when it, I think when it comes to uh, how do you solve it, you know, at the highest level, obviously, one would look at it from a system perspective. You, everything, everything from the algorithmic aspect of it, uh, distribution of app, you know, the app distributed nature of applications, uh, you know, all, all this part of it and how you optimize that protocols and so on. Um, uh, another part of it. So, um, yeah, so getting back to, to the solutions here, uh, you obviously look at it from a systems perspective. Um, I think there's also an opportunity for equipment vendors to provide low latency like we do. So, you know, whether it's at the component, but like I mentioned earlier, I think doing it from a uh, looking at the overall point to point and everything that goes in between, do it as a system design problem is, is one way addressing that. Um, uh, the other thing here uh, with, with switching equipment, it's I, I think uh, uh, the tendency is to undersubscribe. This is often done to remove the, the inherent jitter you get with switching equipment, but then that has inefficiencies associated with it, so people will move towards, uh, I know I'm going a little long here, but uh, we'll move towards uh, <laughs> Um, they'll move towards, uh, uh, for that switching equipment, they'll move towards, um, uh, uh, sorry, their um, uh, connection-oriented technologies in order to, to address that, uh, get over the packet queuing delays. And, um, and so I think the most, I want to get to the most interesting opportunity here, I think might be in the virtualization, if you will, aspect of it. Let me talk about fixed points. But it seems to me there might be an opportunity sort of longer term looking there on if you can virtualize what's happening at those fixed points and find a way to move them closer together somehow in a virtual space like the whole concept of virtual data centers. Maybe there's an opportunity there longer term and it would be really interesting to see if something like that comes about 
and especially in the context, I think, of software-defined networking, how one, one might uh, do something like that. I think that could be so, very interesting. So for those challenges and opportunities, let's go to Satoshi. All right. Um, I don't want to dis distract the conversation in terms of uh, faster, faster speed and low, uh, low latency. But also, uh, from that uh, angle, uh, I'd like to point out the important thing for financial sector is um, reliability for network services, uh, obviously. And the, essentially, they are looking for 100% SLA. And uh, uh, fiber, fiber uh, telecommunications company, as well as you know, um, wireless company, for, for friends, um, we uh, need to serve or provide the uh, best uh, quality of services. Um, in, in, in order them, uh, for them to do so, we are going to provide power and cooling redundant you know, fiber networks in right. order for them to provide it. This is what we are doing. So. Thank you. And the two service providers, uh, international, go, Bjarni. <coughs> well, I think, uh, as Satoshi was talking about cooling, I think the personal challenge that we are <laughs> faced with is, is, you could bring your equipment in here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It is it's absolutely freezing in here. <laughs> uh, uh, but I'd like to talk about the challenges and from the point of view of the, the customers first. And uh, when we talk about the high frequency traders or the, the financial, financial traders, their challenge is that the, is normally it is the vendor, it's a dream world for um, customers when there's fierce competition among vendors. Uh, but now in this instance, when it, it's a question of the lowest, having the lowest latency uh, circuit, it is a nightmare for them because there's fierce competition and the network operators are constantly improving their, uh, their own network and getting a little bit ahead, shaving two milliseconds or, or 30 mi microseconds away from their network so they're a little bit faster than, than uh, the, the one that is currently faster, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So and you can do that more easily on the, when you're a network operator. You can do that more easily um, terrestrially. You can cut that corner, um, go through that church, drill through that hill. So you shave that one millisecond to make your connection between Chicago and New York, say, uh, the fastest. So that's the challenge that, that our customers are faced with. But there I lay, lies our opportunity as uh, we are operating, we, we are providing that fastest connectivity for our customers. So if we don't, if, if Hibernia doesn't happen to own the, the fastest network, we're certainly going to partner up with, with the ones that, uh, that uh, owns the fastest connectivity down to Bovesta and offering that. And Eric, sorry to say that, if somebody beats you, I will be there and, and, and providing the fastest connectivity to Bovesta over that, over that somebody. So that's rather than being the f right, high frequency yeah. traders and having to do all that research and continuously stay on, on top of that, um, we do that for those, for the customers. That's very smart. That's now in, but in ter terms of challenge for, our, for us, the, um, the vendors, and I like to touch on what Shelton was saying, uh, sometimes it is that people claim to be faster than light. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, are, we are building a, 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 a transatlantic network, a new transatlantic cable, which is the fastest that you can do because that y it, it is speed of light and distance. A, that gives you the latency. It's very, very simple. And when I hear that people are beating our, our, um, our proposed 59.8 millisecond latency, it, first of all, I, I check whether they're drilling through the core of the earth because that's the only way to, <laughs> uh, to be faster. Um, and I scratch my head, what, what is happening? And that's that what uh, causes confusion uh, uh, a number of times because we can't expect our customers to do all the due diligence. They just take people at, at their face value. Um, so it takes a few weeks and months to convince, put the ruler on the, on the map and say, no, you, you can't actually do that. You can't, you can't be speed of light. So one of the challenges is reality and helping it's your customers system, yeah. to recognize reality. Eric? Yeah, I mean, I agree 100%, and that's why at, at Globe, from day one, we've embraced partnerships um, because we believe that, look, uh, you cannot do it all. And what people don't realize is that these things cost an awful lot of money. Um, I take my hat off to Bjarni and his team for building Project Express because, you know, they're, they're way up there in, in terms of, of the amount of money that they need to invest in order to build latency to shave off, let's say, eight milliseconds. So creating the business case to do that um, is, is, is not easy. Right? And in our case, unless somebody builds a new 
subsea network that's probably going to cost them somewhere between 300 million and, and, and half a billion dollars, you're, there's just no way of doing it faster, right? So, and, I, and, and, and just to elaborate on that, th that's the difference between the terrestrial uh, competition and the submarine. Exactly. You, you can always, as I said, uh, cut through that, that hill or drill through that hill or, or, or cut through that church to add uh, Shea one millisecond away from the terrestrial world. You cannot build a submarine. You're, you either build a new cable altogether, yep. three hundred million dollar project, or or more. No, that, that I mean, I think that's exactly it. And then the other thing that you need to ask yourself, going back to what Bjorn mentioned, is um, you, you will see some claims, and then you really need to tell the guys. I said, look, this is what I commit. I cannot do anything better. Don't ask me to squeeze, let's say on my route more because we just can't. I mean, that's it's the it's physics of things, right? Now let me see how you came up with your number, and then you realize that they're playing all sorts of games to come up with supposedly a slight better latency number. I think I think the traders are learning about this. Um, I think uh, companies like Hibernia ourselves are doing a, a fairly good job in educating them. Um, and then the, the the real question is is if if they need access to or they need to be a little bit faster and they cannot get it from the network, where are they going to get it from? And that's when you start playing around with algorithms. That's where people start investing money in high-performance supercomputers and, and trying to squeeze out speed in the calculation. How fast can I run these numbers so I can see the number on the screen and then hit the button and make that, let's say, and make that trade, right? So it's not only about infrastructure, it's looking at the whole ecosystem and then saying, all right, where as a financial customer, um, where can I squeeze latency to just be a little bit better than somebody else? Um, and that's, and I think that's what we're seeing. So from a uh, we're very open, let's say, to partnerships, as we said, with, with Hibernia. I mean, there's people that are that need to connect, let's say, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange with Bovespa, and so and then you do terrestrial, subsea, and then you jump on terrestrial again, and that's where you can find, let's say, some savings. Let me jump on that network. Maybe it's, it's your yeah. microwave network or somebody else's that's going to take you from our landing point straight, let's say, to that Chicago Mercantile Exchange. But at the end of the day, these networks need to be built. And, and you know companies like like Allied Fiber, like Hunters, um, they're they're going to look at it and they're going to say, how fast can I recover my investment, in order to do that? Or or if Telehouse builds a new data center, these things are not cheap, and so you really need to look at the gamut of, of solutions and then figure out whether you can recover them in time, you know, and how fast is this market going to grow and how long it's going to last, you know? But but until that point, I think we all are going to be working very closely together. And, and just trying to come up with a solution that our customers are looking for.